This video covers the derivation of the aggregate supply curve. We'll get there in two steps. The first is that we're going to use our labor market model to uh, get from a description of U or so the unemployment rate or employment in uh, to a description of Y in our functional relationship. So how do we do that? Uh, let's begin with the definition. The unemployment rate is just the number of unemployed people relative to uh, the labor supply. No, that's the wrong variable. The labor supply is L. So that we can write that as L minus N, the number of employed people relative to L. So that is 1 minus N over L. So the unemployment rate is just 1 minus the employment rate, namely the ratio of N to L the number of employed relative to the labor force. Now, what is N? We know that we have a production function that is Y equal to A times N, where A is assumed to be equal to 1. Just for simplicity here, we're assuming a constant level of productivity. Now, if we just plug that in here, we get uh, u as 1 minus y times L. So there's an inverse relationship between the unemployment rate and output. For the wage setting relationship, Ws, W equal to PE times FUZ, that means uh, we can write F in terms of y, namely 1 minus y over L Z. That is exactly the same relationship as we've used previously, just that instead of specifying it in terms of u, we specify it in terms of y. Notice that uh, the unemployment rate, 1 minus y over L, still has a negative effect on nominal wages, but because uh, y enters in this expression with a negative sign, uh, output has a positive effect on the nominal wage, which means that we can draw this wage setting relationship WS with Y on the horizontal axis as an upward sloping relationship. So that is what we get when we use this function, whereas when we use this one, we get the real wage unemployment relationship, the WS, downward sloping WS that we had uh, worked with previously. So what I want to work with from now on in order to derive the AS curve is uh, the expression in terms of output. So that's the first step, from unemployment or from employment to output in the wage setting relationship. I'll go to a new page and do the second step in the derivation of the aggregate supply curve, namely from real wages to prices. So we want on the vertical axis uh, to talk about the price level rather than the real wage as we did in the labor market model. To do that, we uh, recall that the nominal wage is PE times Oops, let me do that as clearly as possible. F of UZ or F of YZ. Just going to write Y with a positive sign here and a positive sign here and a positive sign here. The price setting relationship recall as 1 plus mu W. So now we want to use the above to substitute here so that we get P equal to 1 plus mu times P E F of Y and Z. And that is it. That is our aggregate supply relationship, the AS curve. The aggregate supply relationship is upward sloping in Y. So let me draw it right here. P on the vertical axis, that's the second step. Uh, y on the uh, 
uh, horizontal axis, that was the first step, and we get a positive relationship for the AS curve. Uh, recognize what we've done. Let me just write out uh, the curve right below here, uh, the, the equation right below here, 1 plus mu times P, E, F of Y and Z. So that is our AS curve. This is crucial for going forward. Now, uh, why do we have this slope? Why does the AS curve have this slope? Uh, first, recognize how we got here. We eliminated the normal wage from the labor market setting here by s through substitution. So we get a relationship between P and Y. But the mechanism behind this is the labor market and is exactly the labor market uh, causality as we talked about previously. So well, that is uh, an increase in Y leads to uh, a decrease in the unemployment rate or if you want so it leads to an increase in employment therefore a decrease in unemployment and therefore a decrease in the unemployment rate and the decrease in the, uh, in the unemployment rate leads to an increase in normal wages which leads to an increase in prices. So causality runs from Y to P. So we can mark that with a, the green arrow here. Causality for the AS curve runs from Y to P. I emphasize that because uh, often uh, at this point students make the mistake to believe that higher prices induce firms to increase their supply. That is not the mechanism that underlies the aggregate supply curve. Causality runs from Y to P through unemployment and the wage bargaining process. Okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, let's go to a new page and actually let's stay on this page and emphasize a couple of points. Uh, to do so, I will uh, take this out and ask the question what, where we are at an equilibrium on the aggregate supply curve. So, is the labor market in equilibrium at any point along this curve? No. The labor market is in an equilibrium only where uh, is at an equilibrium only where prices are equal to expected prices and output is equal to the natural level of output. So that is from uh, the material covered previously where uh, the labor market is in equilibrium where prices, price expectations are satisfied and where the unemployment rate is at its natural or equilibrium level, its structural level and uh, therefore output is as well at its natural level. So there's one point on the AS curve where uh, we're in a medium run equilibrium. Any of the other points can be a short run equilibrium though so that is important to recognize see that uh, that any of these points can be attained in the short run but in the medium run only this point is a consistent equilibrium. Well, that's second. Let me keep track here what we're doing. First, we emphasize causality here. Second, we're talking about this equilibrium. There's one medium run equilibrium where expectations are fulfilled. And third, uh, I want to talk about what happens when expectations change. So how would uh, a rise in PE affect this curve? You see here that PE enters uh, the AS relationship uh, as an exogenous variable on the right hand side and it has a positive impact. So if PE rises the AS curve is shifted upwards and P ultimately will uh, adjust to that so that P 
uh, P adjusts to PE and we attain this new medium run equilibrium.